So fresh from Christy Ring Cup success last weekend and finally a, a good uh, news story surrounding Offaly Hurley. Hurling even. I'm delighted to be joined by one of their greatest players and of course Borough legend as well, Johnny Pilkington. Johnny, how is all keeping with yourself? Uh, everything's good. Everything is good. I'm actually off in a few days here down in uh, actually Wexford. We had two or three uh, lovely days today. Unfortunately, a little drop of rain. So, But uh, yeah, everything is good. Everything positive here in Offaly as well. I can tell you we've had more than just a little drop here off Western Roscommon. It's been absolutely bucketing down uh, pretty much since the early hours of this morning. So, fortunately, the good spell of the weather from a couple of weeks ago seems to be uh, long gone from us. But as I mentioned there, it's been uh, finally a bit of positivity around Offaly Hurling after a couple of tough years with you know the releg- back-to-back relegation to Neil McCarthy and Joe McDonough. Fair to go to Christy Ring last year, but 2021 has been a very positive year. Promotion to Division 1 of the league, they swept all before them. In Division 2A, I think they end up with a the scoring differential of plus 91 from their five games, an average winning margin of 18 points, and they carried that into the Christie Ring Cup, and it was pretty comfortable as well in all three matches, including last Sunday's final against Derry. Yeah, it was. I mean, I, I would imagine that um, Michael Fenley and the selectors were very disappointed with last year. I mean, we, we struggled badly last year, so... What we were looking at, actually, not so much even the Christy Ring, but we were looking at the performances that we would produce against uh, Kerry and uh, and Carlo, who we have struggled over over the last couple of years. And once we swept them aside this year, um, you know, the Christy Ring, we felt, was probably going to be a formality. Uh, no, obviously, there's a bit of disrespect there to the, the opposition there that we've been playing, but... Uh, we felt there that this year those, those the Kerry and the, and the me or the Kerry and the Carlo games were going to be were big, big games. So, um, you know, we just it, it's a funny one, really. You know, they got their goals and they've done it very emphatically, um, both in the league and the and the and the Christie Ring. So, the targets have been reached, um, and I'm presuming that the management and that are, are very happy with that. But I think Michael Fenley has also said, listen, you know, there's an awful lot more work to be done. Yeah. So as, as you kind of touched on, like the Christie ring pretty much was something that Offaly would be expected to get out of 2020. And obviously had that setback, losing the semi-final on penalties to down last year. But the league campaign, like in a lot of ways, it is kind of quite impressive because you would have looked at Division 2A, you would have had Kerry who lost the final last year and lost the Joe Mack final. You had Carlo who had just come down from Division 1. And then you had like Offaly, who were a tier kind of below. They might not have expected to beat these Joe McDonough teams, but to beat them and, and to beat them so comprehensively and, and set things quite quite nice for the summer. It did indeed. It did indeed. And I'm, I'm yes, and I gave the lads the confidence as well to kind of come through, um, which is more important than anything. Because I think what, what Michael Fenley and, and his management team have done this year is that they brought in an awful lot of young lads and youth into it. Um, and I think, you know, it, it was important for them to get over, the, you know, the, the, to have the confidence and to drive on to what's been done. Um, there will be bigger tests ahead, but I'm presuming that the confidence, you know, these lads are just looking forward to, to getting on to the, the Meads, the West Meads, or the, Me- the, 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 the Leashes and the West Meads there in Division 1A of next year, as well as going up against uh, Tipperary and Limerick and, and Cork. So there's a big challenge ahead of us next year. Yeah, I was just even looking at doing kind of research and say the team that took to the field for off his last Ian McCarthy game against Dublin three years ago, from the team that started on Sunday, there was only three players involved that day, David King, Ben Keneally and Owen Cattle. Actually, Owen, if I'm correct in saying, Owen was actually in goals for that game against Dublin. So he's gone from one end of the field to the other. And likes of Shane Dooley, Damien Egan, Shane Kinsley, who all came on subs last day, they also featured in that game. So it very much is a new look off from the team that you know suffered them disappointment of back-to-back relegations a couple of years ago it is indeed and i mean it's like everything and i mean I, you know in fairness to michael fenley and michael Kavanagh, they're after coming in and i suppose in that first year you're only trying to find out lads and and what they're like they probably went through the, the tried and trusted lads there in in the christie ring last year and this year they turned around and went for youth and they went for speed i mean we did we did over the last year to have um we're, we've been competitive at under 20. So a lot of these lads that have come up against the Dublin, who actually turned out to be the 2020 All-Ireland or Leinster champions, they would have, uh, um, awfully would have, 
you know, come fairly close to them. So, I mean, there was that bit of confidence also, uh, say, this year or last year, awfully bit of very fancy leash minor hurling side as well. So, again, th there is a bit of class and a bit of, um, you know, young lads there coming on. And I think this year what happened is that um, Michael Fenley and his boys to change it around, like Killian Sampson, who had been a wing forward, has been put back into to wing back. Um, they changed the midfield, which brought it up. Owen Cattle last year started in the middle of the field, put in a few more legs there into the middle of the field. And then Michael Dignan's son. And I suppose the big the big change for us this year and where all the scoring power is coming from is our centre forward, is in, uh, young Langton. And he seems to be revel re reveling in that role and in the space that the centre forward um, uh, role is creating for him. And, and that's been key to it. So this year, you know, we went with speed, we went with youth. And uh, the confidence is after coming from them. Yeah, another interesting thing I kind of noticed as well from looking at the team on Sunday, we mentioned there with Owen Cattle. He was the only Burr player that was involved in the game, whether he started or kind of came on. When you think back to your playing days, like when you won in 94 and 98, there were six Burr players involved both them days, either started or came on. And you think back then, Burr were not just a dominant force and awfully hurt him, but in kind of Ireland in general, winning club at Ireland. To see an awfully hurling probably has changed quite a good bit. You see, obviously, maybe, you know, Dyke and, you know, Brian Michelson, obviously, maybe originally from St. Rhinus, but, you know, playing with Ban Amir, which is probably more the football part of the county, same with Kieran Burke as well. And we've kind of have seen it, like, we've seen, you know, Burr, I think it's, you know, nearly 15 years since the last one of senior championship. You know, Kilcormer Kalahi have dominated awfully the last kind of couple of years. The club scene is kind of changing a little bit in awfully. Yeah, one of probably the disappointing things is actually not so much Burr. Burr would be gone down maybe fourth or fifth in, in, in the in the club championship here in terms of being favourites to, to win it. But one of the probably more disappointing things is that we've only had one Rhinus uh, lad. Now, Rhinus and Kilcormuck are, are competing on the uh, last year's county final. And they're probably everybody's favourites to compete in this year's county final. And yet between the two teams, we've only had, I think it was two. Who Clancy was in goals, and then Keneally, um, who was captain, and, and they're back. There is one or two uh, Carmack guys that are coming in there from uh, in the in on the subs bench. So even if we go back to last year's county semi finalists at senior level, you probably find a very low representation um, from amongst the clubs that are there. Um, it really probably, in one way, you know, that might be a hindrance as we go on. Um, I think you do need to be playing a lot of your players do need to be playing at the top end of your senior club championship but saying that I mean it doesn't matter to me where the club player comes from if he's good enough he'll stand up and a lot of these lads actually in terms of that you know the, 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 the geography has changed in terms of that traditionally where the Clara, the Sir Kieran's, the Kennedys, the Rhinus and 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 Burrs and that um, have been the dominant in terms of Harlan. Over the last ten years, the, the underage structure has changed over to the Balnamir, Doro, Kilcarnock, Lahey, um, and uh, Claudia Gale. So we can see now where those young lads are actually after coming from. They've had success at underage in in Offaly, and uh, they're bringing it on to senior level. At the moment, those clubs would be at the bottom tier of the of the senior club championship. But there's no doubt that probably in the next two three years, these will be in the the semi finals and competing at finals of. Yeah, even they're looking at like you've got you a good band of representation on the team. You know, with uh, Ross Ravenhill as well in midfield, Leon uh, Fox as well, Bellamount right beside for Bam, which would be another kind of traditional football stronghold. So you certainly are spreading the gospel of uh, the small ball throughout Offaly, and maybe one man who might be a uh, a good reason behind us, a bit more of an influence of North Offaly's Michael Dignan, your former teammate as well, because he's getting a lot of praise, and rightly so, because you know, for his work on the county board, not just, of course, with the hurlers, the footballers, obviously, they achieved promotion in the 20s are going really strong. It's going well so far for your former teammate, anyway. Yeah, uh, he's he, he, maybe maybe he's pulling the strings behind the scenes. Although I doubt if Michael Fenley is that, is going to listen to Michael Dignan in terms of what, what he wants to pick. But in all fairness to to Michael Dignan and Pat Cleary, and even Dahi Regan was over there. They were all involved in the Ballinamere Club, um, maybe seven, eight, ten years ago, and they brought on all those bunch of lads and uh, it come through. In terms of as a chairman, I mean. You know, we felt that in Offaly, 
that things were a bit of a stalemate and that our county board at the time weren't really progressive or that. And in all fairness to Michael Dignan and a few others, they, you know, to put in a band and uh, they said, listen, we'll go for this and we'll try and make changes and that, you know. The one thing that is, there's been a very positive attitude. And listen, we, we can't, we can't take, Dignan and, and can't take responsibility for the fact that, you know, Offaly won the Christie ring as Michael Fenley had, was appointed prior to that. You know, Dignan can't take, um, you know, responsibility, or present county board can't take responsibility for our competitiveness at minor and under 20. And listen, I hope the lads don't take offence, but they're definitely not going to take credit for our Offaly under 20s being into football all Ireland, so they're not. But what they have done is that they've brought in a freshness and then the likes of, you know, and this is the positivity of it, that Shane Lowry is after coming on board. There's other investors after coming on board. I mean, yeah, we are after winning the Christie ring. We're after winning Division 1A or 2B or in, in the league. Our minors were, you know, got to Leinster minor final uh, last year. Unfortunately, a slow start against Kilkenny. So we have been competitive enough um, over the last uh, two years. But... I mean, again, it's about, you know, investing whatever Shane Lowry has to offer to us in, in, in a line and, and getting everything up and running. I mean, we have a fabulous facility in the Faithful Fields. We've had that for the last number of years. Um, and maybe that in itself is, uh, is going to be start to pay dividends in terms of uh, how easy it is for us to uh, avail of strength and conditioning, uh, gym work, and, you know, and the fields are top class out there. Yeah, just before we kind of maybe finish up on Offaly, just going forward, like what is obviously going to be your hopes and expectations? You know, Division 1 hurling next year, I suppose Antrim is an example of how the, you can kind of close that gap coming up as well. And you'd actually be hoping that it'd be, you know, a proper league campaign next year that Antrim or Offaly would actually even have more time to prepare than Antrim had. But in terms of the championship, we mentioned like, look, while well, it was great winning the Christie Ring, but it's still not where Offaly want to be. And in reality speaking, they probably expect it to be in the Joe McDonough district. So still in terms of championships that are, are probably still a little bit behind where they really want to be. Yeah, you're dead right. Like, I mean, one of the disappointing things, and I don't know why why this happened or why it didn't happen, or maybe it did and I didn't hear about it. But, like, I mean, after the league, I would have thought that Offaly would have played Westmead and Leash. And, you know, and just to give them a taste and see how we're going actually against that level. And we didn't do it. We played, you know, we played Tipperary in a challenge match. I think it was their third team. And we went out when we were missing three or four. And two days later, we played uh, Wexford in a challenge match. And we went missing three or four again there. Now, Tipperary gave us an awful hiding. So they did in that, in that scenario. But so, you know, I wanted to see, you know, how we were going to be pitted against the leash and, and Westmead. That's the next step in it. We're going to have to wait until the next year. Um, and next year, you know, Westmead are after winning the Joe McDonough, so they're up in the in the Lee McCarthy. Antrim are after uh, coming down, um, so it'll only be Antrim. I think actually, really, it'll be the big test. I think Leash are still in the in the in the Lee McCarthy, as, as far as I'm uh, aware. So again, they're the next step on on the ladder, um, and it's, we we just have to wait and see how we're going to uh, progress against them. We won't get the the space and freedom that we have been uh, so comfortable with over the last you know six months. So it'll be a new test for these lads. But their confidence is going to be high. They're going to be looking forward to. It. I, I'd imagine there's a spring in their step, and I'd say you know even going out and playing in that Division One A in the league is going to be marvelous for these lads. You know you just you know there's no better feeling than going out and you know and, and marking someone that you know is a high profile. In our own terms, in, our, in back in our own day, you know, we just relished that. You know, the bigger the name, you know, the more, the, the harder you tried, and and the harder you tried, the better it is for you. Yeah, and even you got Kerry now have lost the last two Joe McDonough finals. Carlo will probably feel they've underperformed the last couple of years in that competition. So Joe McDonough will be will be a tough one next year. There's no two ways about that. We just might actually um, move on, um, Johnny, for the next maybe couple yeah. of minutes. Uh, I might look ahead to this weekend's. Two crunching games in Crow Park, Ireland, Hurling semi-final. It's fantastic to have the Hurling semi-final weekend back with fans. You know, don't go wrong, last year's games were, were very, very good games, but I think without the fans, they were soulless contests. First up on Saturday, Limerick versus Waterford, repeat of last year's final. Obviously, a lot of the talk about Limerick coming into this game is their remarkable turnaround in the Munster final three weeks ago. 
10 points down at half time. They end up winning it by five, a 15 point swing. What do you put it down to a temporary collapse or just an uh, unbelievable second half from the Art Iron Champions? I think it was just an unbelievable first 10 minutes um, from Limerick. Um, and, you know, this again is tongue in cheek. I mean, um, there has been a lot of talk about sports psychologists over the last couple of years in terms of even being with Limerick and Tipperary and that. Uh, I mean, they call it at at half time. I mean, you know, all going you now, Tipperary, like right from the word go, they didn't. Um, they were probably a bit unfortunate as well in terms of that they, they conceded so much um, in that first 10 minutes spell that it was totally wiped out. If they were able to get over that 10 minutes spell, that surge from Limerick would have just died off and fainted off. So the psychology, which I mean, is like, I mean, they should have been expecting that on both, you know, from, uh, from Tipperary and say, listen, don't panic. We're not going to deal with that. We'll be able to deal with this. But as it turned out, you know, they weren't, their heads went down really in Tipperary and Limerick's uh, heads were up. So, um, a phenomenal second half performance. Again, it's all to do with that first 15 minutes. The, the last 20 minutes of it was just kind of, you know, well, we're, we're in the driving seat as a, from a Limerick point of view. Um, so, the, Tipperary were just a bit unfortunate to concede so much in that 10 minutes, more so than anything. But saying that, they should have been expecting that that intensity from Limerick. Yeah, you even think in terms of like lineups and everything else like that, from a Limerick point of view, I suppose a lot of people were surprised and Aaron McGlan, Aaron Galan didn't start that game, but he was in before half time. Now he probably had that instant in the second half, which was quite fortunate to be sent off. Do you expect that you know the Limerick will kind of not so much so kind of learn from mistakes, but kind of realise we can't afford to leave a player of that magnitude out of the starting team? Again, doesn't it kind of come around to you know that all the panels say, well, listen, you know, if you don't put it in in or whatever it is, listen, you're everybody is a fair shot. But realistically, in every game and every team and every great team, you know, certain people uh, get latitude. You know, I remember DJ Carey was dropped for the 2004 um, Leinster semi final against Wexford. He, as he documented himself there, that he went playing golf and he was late. And Brian Cody said, right, that's no problem. And uh, he came back and he dropped them for the, the game on Sunday. And Wexford lost by that, or Kilkenny lost by that last minute goal. Um, so, you know, there are some players that you just have to, you know, give that bit of leeway to it. But I would imagine, too, that, you know, that it was just the Limerick attitude going in there that Murray probably just thought that, listen, we, we'll get through this. We're, we're much better than Tipperary. We won't have to go to. So they reorganised and refocused and, and that. So the, the big question in, at, at the weekend is you're presuming that Waterford are going to expect that ferocity from, uh, from Limerick. Uh, Limerick probably won't be able to bring that ferocity on a second day. I think these kind of things are once off. But I would expect them an, an in-between, if not maybe a little bit more towards the second half performance. So Waterford have to prepare for that. Um, they're after having two or three games over the last uh, three weeks um, and they've had mixed mixed fortunes with them in terms of, you know, had a marvellous first half against Galway and then proceeded to lose, um, you know, a lead on it. And it was the same. A leash, you know, could have caught them. There were 10 minutes or five minutes to go. A leash were a point ahead and, and they got through it. So Waterford are a bit iffy. Um and but you're going to have to play for 70 minutes and you're going to have to be in Limerick's face for 70 minutes. It's one of the things that Tipperary didn't really do even in their first half. I felt that they weren't really in Tipperary in Limerick's face. They weren't really knocking them back. Uh, what they were doing was getting onto the brakes, moving the ball fast. And in a way, yeah, you have to do that. But you also in in those. 50 50 challenges you have to you know you have to make sure that listen you're letting the Limerick lad know that you know I'm there and I'm going to be in your face all day and I felt even in the first half uh, Tipperary didn't probably do that yeah just even looking at Waterford like a lot was kind of highlight made going into their championship opener against Clare I think they only had eight the team that started last year there and final just true players that had left the panel this year or injuries or just managerial decisions but was then looking at 12 of the team that started Ireland final against Tipperary the last day. And you can kind of notice that they gave me the touch on the first game out after the Clare defeat. You know, they stumbled over the line against Leach, would have been expected to win. But you can kind of notice that bit by bit they're getting better and better. And it is starting to look more like the Waterford that had that brilliant run to the Ireland final last year. 
Yeah, it seems to be, you know. I mean, I would have fancied um, Tipperary in terms of the hurling, but, you know, um, uh, uh, Watford, uh, um, wasn't Watford, it was. Uh, yeah, um, the Watford, they are coming, they, you know, but I still think that they're, they're mixed. The mix isn't really fully right yet. Um, you know, Austin Gleeson is going to be a key player on it. He has to play. He was the only one really in Watford that I felt was able to stand up to the, the physicality of, of, of uh, the Limerick lads and he was comfortable in that position. But again, he was more of a centre forward, you know. Um, obviously, Tiger Burke on that as well in, with Watford and uh, he's uh, he's just coming back there from injury as far as I know. Um, it, it will be a help. So, um, they seem to be showing it. But they seem to be at the same time just a little bit all over the place in terms of I don't know if they're they're fully gelled yet. I think there's a lot of individualism in it at the moment. But there's no doubt about it. Listen, they have two lads inside in terms of Desi Hutchinson and uh, Stephen Bennett. You get a quick ball into them and they'll do damage inside. There's no doubt. So just going by the sound you there, you're you're fully expecting that Limerick will be back in another Iron final by half six, seven o'clock Saturday evening. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm presuming they will. But there's something again, you know what? I think what Watford have more so than actually Cork, or uh, more so, will have the physicality. They have the physical players to be able to uh, to block the Limerick lads. You know, uh, they have that little bit of talent then as well outside it, a little bit of flair which can help them get over the line. The question is, are they going to put the bodies on the line? Are they going to are they going to really uh, front up to Limerick? And that's what they're going to have to do. It'll be more of a it'll be more of this, and we're all in this. And forget about your game plan. It's going to going to go kind of a bit, kind of have to go a bit mad here. Kind of a um, a non controlled confusion is what they're going to have to have to have to kind of come to, to Limerick. Yeah. Then we we'll look at uh, Sunday's game. Kilkenny first core clash of two of the traditional counties at three thirty in Crow Park. Kilkenny obviously come into this game as back to back Leinster champions once again. Like they went, I think, four years out of Leinster title. And, now they've won back to back. It kind of seems like the old ways of returning again. What have you made of them kind of so far? Like obviously TJ Reid will continue to be the kind of main man, but we've seen the likes of other players like Owen Cody really set up against Wexford 1 5. You have James Marr, they got three points the last day. Adrian Mullins back this year. He was young player of the year two years ago. You know, you've likes of Hugh Lawler doing really well at the back. There's a nice blend to this Kilkenny team. Yeah, there is, but I'm, you know, I mean, at the, at, at you know, at the bottom moment, but if you put in the top ten teams in 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 the country, Ireland wise, you know, I would put Kilkenny maybe around, you know, five or six, and then you have Wexford and Galway in around that, and it's just the system that we have at the moment there that listen, you know. The weaker level, we have to face it, you know, really the weaker side of the hurling is, is in Leinster, and uh, Kilkenny are are dominating there. Um, they had a fabulous game against Wexford. I'm not a hundred percent sure. It was it was a fabulous game. It was hidden. It was it was everything you had. There wasn't much space out there. Um, but Wexford and and they went toe to toe, and it was marvelous. But I'm not too sure whether it was two just average sides that were at it, or one really major contender, and there are two major contenders for the All Ireland. I, I have my doubts about Kilkenny. I think that they have got all the brawn all right. I'm not 100% sure whether they have the the the, the, the hurling skill factor, the touch that's needed now, that when you take a look at the Limericks, take a look at, uh, at Cork, take a look at, um, you know, Tipperary, that, that extra little bit to get them over. No doubt, listen, they have Kilkenny tradition behind them, which is always worth five or six pints. Tyrone, Brian Cody, there's another four or five pints. So, Cork are going to be kind of up against it in that kind of uh, format. But if Cork play the way they're going to, the way they can play, Cork are a fast, lively, skillful team. I think they're going to give Kilkenny all sorts of trouble. I was going to say, it'd be a rare one to hear Brian Cody get four or five points in the game. But I do remember there was a one hour Ireland final. He actually got man in the match when he was manager. That's so right. maybe, so maybe it would be that one common. Just you could touch on it there. Like you would have Kilkenny five or six in the pecking order. And this is something that Shane and Michael would. Regularly, kind of speak a lot on the hurling show is that like Munster is the stronger of the t the two problems. It is a long way ahead of Leinster hurling. You obviously seem to kind of back that up, and even Munster counties like Clare and Tipperary who are already out of the championship, if they were to come across Kilkenny, you would actually find some to beat them. I would.
I would. I mean, one thing that Kilkenny would have is obviously that physical and their being on the work rate. But I just think that only takes you so far. And I think that, you know, work rate means that you don't have the ball. And if you don't have the ball against the likes of Tipperary or against the likes of the, well, then you're going to be in trouble. Um, so in that kind of format, I would fancy the likes of Tipperary and I would fancy the likes of Clare um, uh, taking down uh, Kilkenny. Yeah, just looking at their opponents on Sunday, Cork, obviously, like Waterford, the other half of the draw, they've worked their way through the back door with a couple of good wins, that cracking win against Clare. And then the win against Dublin, never really in major doubt, two goals in the first half probably killed it. Dublin had a bit of a revival late towards the end, but still only got within four points. You still felt Waterford were, or Cork even were a nice distance. So a lot of murmurs going around that like this, with this young Cork team, the talent coming through from under 20s from last year and this year's team, that like the potential is there for them to dominate if they can just get a smell of it and win one. I find that hard to believe, given the age profile, that Limerick team, they're going absolutely nowhere. What's your own view on Cork? Yeah, I mean, it's a big test for these Cork players, actually, as well, on, on Sunday. I mean, they're going to come up with a physical challenge. Whether they like the physical challenge or not, I'm not we're not 100% sure yet, because they haven't played that way. Um, they are going to have to mix it. They are going to have to mix it with Kilkenny. And then because there's a bigger challenge coming up, more than likely against Limerick, uh, you know. So in that kind of way, listen, they're all players fast and they're all and, and that. It might get you if you're first to the ball and they move it and move it quickly, you know, they'll take it down. But you're still going to need the physicality, which you just don't have. So, you know, even now on Sunday, you know, when you say Kilkenny are going to come out, they're going to come down, close it down, Cork, Cork are trying to go to try to get to that ball first, move it quickly. They'll overplay it, Cork will, so that'll give Kilkenny loads of opportunities to turn over the ball. Um, if it could be one of those days that Cork and all these passes stick and then it's happy day when you're under pressure that Kilkenny will win it. Saying all that, Cork will be able to run at Kilkenny. I think they'll open up Kilkenny two or three times and goals will come. So goals will win games. And uh, I, I just, I, I'd love to see Cork kind of coming with the physicality um, and putting it up to Kilkenny as well as their hurling. But at the moment, there hasn't been anything to show there over the last maybe year or two that that physicality has been brought in. And you need the physicality at, at, at inter-county lad senior level. Yeah, we, we've seen a couple of weeks ago, obviously, Joe Canyon broke Henry Sheffin's record to become the all-time championship scorer. But on the same day as well, Patrick Horgan actually joined the two of them. I mean, the third only player to reach over 500 points in the championship. A lot was made of his performance against Cork and how he had maybe a bit of an off day just scoring the five frees. But he looked more back to himself the last day. 10 points against Clare, 12 points the last day against D Dublin, three from open play. I know he's the same age as Joe, but it doesn't seem to be as much kind of talk of retirement as it was maybe surrounding him, that the still feel he can go next year. If Cork get through Sunday, get another game, could we actually be talking about him even breaking the all-time championship scoring record next year? Because he's not that far behind. Uh, listen, it's quite possible. I would imagine that Pat Horgan, um, and, you know, he just loves Hurling. And uh, he has been free of injuries, whereas I think Joe Canning has, uh, has uh, had a few which has held him back. The all-time scoring thing just doesn't doesn't sit with me any kind of bit because, listen, these are all extremely very good free takers. The number of games are after coming on and, and there's all that. It's how what's your influence on, on, on the play. And Patrick will probably be a little bit disappointed in his overall performances, actually, in terms of what he's contributing to Cork. Uh, in the play. I think he's a fabulous hurler. He's probably the top hurler in the, in, in, in the game. He's going to make things happen. You have to look at him. Anytime he gets the ball, there should be a score. He's laying it off. He's a great team player in that. So, listen, if Pat Horgan goes on over the next couple of years, we go going for him. But, you know, Cork are going to need him this Sunday against that strong Kilkenny. He's strong. He's able to take the, the punishment. He's able to get away from his marker. He's able to take a goal when it's on. And, and that's going to be very important because the, you know, there's an awful lot of young lads and young light lads around him. And he's going to have to lead from front. So, as I said, I think he's been a little bit disappointed in, in, in his game so far. Now, again, we're talking about little disappointment here. These be man, man of the match performances, you know, whereas, you know, they're off the scale for, you know, they're just that bit down on the, for Pat Horgan's high standards and that, you know. So, um, yeah, listen, fabulous hurler as well. Yeah, just conscious, conscious of the time. Nearly happy here, half an hour, Johnny. No, so just uh, 
Qu quickly, if, if you're who you're going to be backing on on Sunday, who will you be putting your money on? Because I know you do like a good bet. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, and uh, listen, I, I, you know, to me, it's going to be Limerick. Uh, I, I, sorry, Limerick on Saturday. It's going to be Cork, and the hope uh, is sort of from all us kind of punters, all we're looking at really is, you know, two right good games. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I looked at about maybe 20, 25 minutes of the Christie ring. I'm not interested in 40 points on the board, 20 points on the board, lads tipping balls over the bar. So uh, in the two games, I'm looking for closing down a little bit of physical, some good scores. And when you do that, listen, Limerick have all the fire, firepower for Waterford. And I just think Cork will probably have the cuteness over Kilkenny. Yeah, I knew you were a good man for the bet from a little story I see in your Lorca Gale documentary there <laughs> back in the winter. And one thing as well, I seen in that towards the end, you um, you seem to be involved on the Camogie side of things, involved with Borough Club. Is that still the case, or what is your involvement at the moment? You're still doing a bit of coaching? Uh, yeah, doing a little bit there. I'm actually with the Offaly under 14 Camogie. I stood away from the Borough under 14 because I was with those bunch of girls for four or five years, and uh, they're not listening to my bark anymore. Um, so. Uh, the effect isn't is it wouldn't be as isn't as strong, um. So I'm I just gone on there to the definitely under fourteen Camogie, um, which is grand. I'm also involved there with the bar lads, the young lads at under thirteen. Again, my kids are involved, so it's very easy for me to be involved. You know. Yeah, it's one way to kind of keep in touch with the game anyway. But anyway, yeah. thanks very much, um, for your time, John. I know you're on holidays and everything else like that, so I'll no let problem. you go off and enjoy the rest of your holidays, and, and hopefully you still get to see the hurling off the weekend anyway. That's it. Thanks very much. Cheers, Johnny. No problem. Hello.